So then 1993 rolls around with the Grammy Awards and you guys win two Grammys. Yeah. You won Best Rap Performance by Duo or, or Group, which is, you know, and people really have to understand that there's Grammys and then there's Grammys. Yeah. Right? Best Performance by Duo or, or you know, Best Rap Performance by Duo or Group is a Grammy. Yeah. Right? But the Best New Artist Grammy that you guys won, yeah. that's one of the four big ones. Yeah. There's, there's Best New Artist, uh, Album of the Year, Record yeah. of the Year, and Song of the Year. Like, yeah. Those are the four big ones that everyone really goes after. Yeah. And you guys won Best New Artist, yeah. which is the first time a hip-hop artist ever won that award. Exactly. Yeah. And to my knowledge, we're still the only ones that's a group that holds that award. I know like Lauren won it as a solo artist, but as far as hip hop group, I'm not sure if anybody else has won it since us. So I may be wrong, but yeah. Well, I think uh, Chance the Rapper won Best New Artist. Solo again. Right, yeah. solo, solo again. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think any other group has. So it's like hip hop group, which, see it's, it's a mixed bag of feelings with that, right? Because you grow up in the 80s and 70s, and the Grammys literally is the pinnacle of music. I mean, you're watching the Grammys, and it's you dream, any musician, I don't care if hip-hop or not, you're dreaming of getting on that stage. That is the stage to rock. There is no better or no higher. And so to be able to win a Grammy, period, or even be nominated was amazing. But to win those Grammys was amazing. And at the same time, there was a movement in hip-hop that was trying to fight for our respect at the Grammys, make sure that they aired the actual hip hop award on the air instead of behind the scenes. These are all things were going on prior to us winning, you know, when Fresh Prince and um, Will, uh, Will, Will and um, Jazzy won theirs, when um, Tretch and them won theirs, with Naughty by Nature. There was this movement to make sure it was on the air, you know what I mean? And, and I think ours might have been the first, maybe, maybe Tretch and them too, I forget that was actually, you know, tele tele broadcasted, put it that way. Well, I actually looked it up while you were talking. And technically, you guys are not the only rap group that won Best oh, okay. New Artist. The other rap group, and it's kind of a rap group, is Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. There you go. That's true. Very true. There you go. And even though Ryan Lewis is not a rapper, he's a producer, technically that is a They're rap a group. group so. You're right. Very good point. Good point. Yeah. So, so they were second. You were first. Yeah. You guys were also named the Band of the Year by Rolling Stone. Yeah. I think that was 93. Yeah. So it's just a whirlwind for you at this time. A literal whirlwind. It's crazy. Overseas yeah. too. Like Beatlesque vibes. Like getting chased down the street. I mean, paparazzi, that type of vibe. Which is totally foreign for me in particular, but probably for the whole crew. Just crazy. Well, you had a quote. You said, being 21, being young, having access, I made some stupid decisions. True. <laughs> what were the stupidest decisions you made during that time? I mean, one is I was, you know, with women, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just various women throughout the world. Like, like probably most young dudes would, but I definitely did. You know what I mean? And getting women pregnant and abortions and, you know, just huge mistakes. That would be one of the things. Yeah. I made other mistakes too. Like some of the people I played off, like I played off people that I deeply respected, but I was cocky and I felt like I don't need them. They're not hot right now. So like people like Patrice Russian, who I love as an artist, wanted to work with me and I played her off like she wasn't nothing and that was stupid, you know? Yeah. I mean, did you have any kids during that time? Uh, not that we're born. I had a kid later, but you know, unfortunately, I was, I was choosing abortion. Yeah. How many abortions? Two were had. Two. two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then two, at one point, Sp yeah. Well, then at one point, Spike Lee uh, approached you about doing some music for the Malcolm X movie. Yeah, he did, which was crazy. Like as I told you, I was a crazy Spike Lee fan, and. He met us in New York um, at a club called Sweet Jane's and we were closing for Last Poets. And he was backstage and 
he said, yo, I'd love to, first of all, I was bugging that he was backstage. And second of all, um, he asked us to be in this film called Love Supreme that he was going to do about John Coltrane. And he turned out to do Mo' Better Blues. We weren't even on there. And then he did Gangstar instead, the jazz thing. And then he later said, yo, why don't you do this Malcolm X joint? Which I actually found out later that Chuck D got offered that Malcolm X movie first. And he was going through drama with him and Professor Griff. So he handed it off to me. And I didn't even know that until like last year. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. So Spike and I worked together with the Malcolm X joint. And then, of course, the whole group on the music video and stuff like that. Yeah, that was a hell of a movie. I'm still kind of annoyed that I never got an Oscar. Uh, Who are you telling? Yeah, it yeah. should have. To me, that was one of Denzel's best roles. And it would have been a huge statement for black people if he could have got an Oscar for that joint because of the dignity and the revolutionary spirit that he possessed, you know, playing Malcolm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I really feel that that was the Oscar he should have won instead of uh, Black Klansman because it was such a better movie. Oh, no, I, I didn't even see Black Klansman, but like he won Training Day. I'm talking about Denzel now. And when yeah. he won Training Day, that was the first time he played a villain in any movie. And he gets an Oscar for that. Yeah. I felt like a lot of people felt slighted for that. Like, really? Yeah, but what I meant also is Spike Lee, who directed Malcolm X. Totally. Uh, yeah. You know, was a better movie than Black Klansman. But I feel like with Black Klansman, they're like, all right, we've snubbed you all these years. We'll just give you give you the Oscar for this movie. Yeah, yeah, I agree This is sort that. of our makeup for, for not doing X. Because I remember at that time, everyone was wearing X hats. Everyone Everybody. had X shirts. No Malcolm doubt. X was everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and you guys were a part of that. Our video alone with Spike Lee was in Brooklyn. And we had about 500 extras all walking down the street in Brooklyn, signs, flags, the whole nine yards, similar to the Fight the Power video uh, that PE did for uh, Do the Right Thing. And it was just total chaos, the love and the, the vibe that people have and had for Malcolm X. Dope. Well, after that, is that when problems within the group started? No, nah, it actually started earlier, unfortunately. You know, it started pretty soon after we started touring it started to be like dissension inside of the group. And oh my gosh, talk about a man that was gutted. I felt gutted because of it. But yeah, it started to be some tension inside of the group right at the top. Well, Headliner, who started Arrested Development with you, I guess gave you an ultimatum and said that he wanted 50-50 ownership. Well, he didn't start it with me, but it is said that he did. So what happened is I told you, you know, I put the flyer up. He answered the flyer, but yes, he asked for 50-50 and it was a huge just debacle because of that. Because he asked for that and I was like, I can't see that. And we just, we had a, you know, a division and what happened because of that, he pulled a lot of people in the group on his side and others. I didn't have to pull them on my side. I knew them longer. They were just closer to me and we had the group just sort of split. And while we were still torn and, and, and we were sort of close, but we had that little, um, you know, that little bitterness that sort of got itself in there and, and it started to work its way to the group. Well, he actually ended up suing you over this, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. We went to court over all of that kind of stuff. You got to imagine there's big money being made, right? And so, you know... There was a lot of things that I'd say about that whole issue, but the truth of the matter is, is that it was a lot of money. Be, it's almost like when people die in families and families could be real close knit and then somebody with money dies and all of a sudden the family starts going crazy trying to get money. Like that's a very common theme. And unfortunately that happened. I talked about, I talked about it a lot in the song Ease My Mind and um, on our next album. It was so disheartening and so, you know, just soul crushing. To, for us to go through that. Right, because eventually you guys settled for a 60-40 split. Exactly, yep. Now, but when you signed to uh, Chrysalis, did you sign by yourself or did the whole group sign together? No, actually me and Headliner signed that deal and the rest of the group members were workers for hire because as I was telling you earlier, like really the group wasn't formed. Like it was a, once we got that deal, 
we had to try to decide, like, well, who's in the group, you know? And so me and Headlotter were best friends, so that was a given. But who else is in the group? And that wasn't really solidified. And so we we put them as workers for hire because we didn't even really know how this record was going to do. And we didn't really, they weren't on a lot of the, on a lot of the songs. So it was just, it was, it was, it was sort of a, you know, running by the seat of our pants type of thing. Flying by the seat of our pants. Well, you guys get ready for this tour with En Vogue and things start to kind of fall apart backstage. I guess it happened with uh, Dion Ferris. Among she was just one of the most vocal at that time. But yeah, as I was telling you, it was already happening. You know, the, the group was pretty much split in two, and she was very vocal backstage and went off on me. And it was literally right before our first and biggest show in our career. It was literally like we were backstage at the Fox Theater here in Atlanta, which is like another legendary stage to rock and a dream stage for us to be on. And literally about, I'm saying 30 minutes before we had to hit the stage, everything hit the fan backstage. And it was just, again, just one of those things like, are you kidding me right now? Right, well, according to the way Headliner described the situation, I guess she asked for an extra $100 that night. Yeah, I don't remember. But okay. I know that that wasn't the real issue because you know, she threw a chair at me and all types of drama. Like it was, it was the stuff of reality TV. You know what I mean? And so it wasn't over a hundred dollars, but I'm not sure what it was, but it, and if it was like, if that was being discussed, that wasn't the, just like arguments in marriage or what have you, that wasn't the real issue. You know what I mean? Like there was issues that were already in existence and that might've been the thing that we were talking about that night. I'm not sure. Right. Cause you two get into this big argument and you're about to go on stage and she just quits. She quits. Literally like five minutes, <laughs> five minutes before we hit stage, she quit. Yeah. Right, so you had to get another kind of singer to just sort of do her part and try to, try to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and Dion Ferris, she left the group and she put out a solo album that was really dope. Real dope, real dope. Loved it. Had a, had a hit song on there. Yep. What was that? I what know. Was the name of the song again? It's called "I Know." I know what you're doing, baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great song. Great song. Great album. I guess you. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess uh, the two of you ran into each other like ten years later at the same venue. We did, which is totally God. You know what I'm saying? Like we would meet at a. I want to say it was a Prince concert at the Fox Theater. And what's funny is I wasn't planning to meet her there. I'm in the row right in the back of her. So literally, these are assigned seats. I'm in a seat and she's in the seat in front of me. So I hand her a note. I write it on the note. Please forgive me for anything that I've done wrong. And I really hope we can you know, make amends for all of this drama that has happened in our past. I hand it over to her. She hands me back a note saying the same thing and a few other things that I won't share, but it's good things, you know what I mean? And yeah, I, mean, I felt like we had rectified things. I love it, man. Adult, adult shit. Adult, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. 